Thanks. Right, so I'm just going to quickly run through the materials that I use. I'm in the chat room. Is there anyone Right, okay, so Hash is in the, the chat room um, under Marie Antonio. So if you have any questions while I'm demonstrating, just write in the chat room and he'll relay them to me. Okay, so I'll just quickly run through the materials just so that you've kind of got an idea of what I'm using this evening. So I am using acrylics. I am following on from Hash's demo, if you like, from last month. So I'm even at his easel using his materials, apart from my paints and my brushes. Okay, because that would be rather cheeky if I used all of that as well. So I'll quickly just show you. So I use acrylics and these are the paints that I'm using. One of the most common kind of criticisms with acrylics is that they dry really quick. So my palette is actually a nibbles tray. So it has an airtight lid, which basically keeps the paint fresh for weeks and weeks and weeks. Obviously, if you put out acrylics and you put a tiny amount out like that, it will dry very quickly. So I do use quite a bit of paint and that obviously isn't gonna dry quickly. And with the airtight lid, um, it's not gonna dry quick either. It keeps it fresh for ages. In terms of colors, I've always got the primary colors in my palette. Um, the theory behind it is that I can mix any color from it, but I'll always have two yellows, two reds, or and two blues. Um, obviously, there's a lot of nice colors that you can buy these days. So I might have some other token colors like burnt sienna, which I love. It's a really good mixing color. I've got a phthalo green as well and a deep violet for some of my darks. Most of these are Amsterdam acrylics and the yellows, I'm using the expert um, version of the Amsterdam acrylic. So that's the artist quality. I always find that, especially with the lighter colors, there's a lot more pigment. Whereas if you use a, a student grade and you put it on something like this, it tends to just look quite translucent. So a lot more pigment in the yellow. So if I put it on, hopefully it will just stay a lot stronger. So that's the paints. And in terms of the brushes, I've got a selection. So I've got um, decorators brushes and I've also got artist brushes as well. So these are Liquitex freestyle brushes. And again, I do use probably flat head um, brushes as well, just because you just create some really nice marks from them. So a variety of sizes. So for those of you that aren't familiar with my, my work, it's very much an impressionistic interpretation of the subject. Um, this is really weird looking at myself. I don't know. Um, it's just really off-putting. Yeah, it's an impressionistic um, interpretation of animals. I like doing animals because of the colors and the patterns that you get. Um, I do teach and run workshops where I do other subjects as well. One of the things that I really focus on is shapes, colors. So if you've seen the email that was sent around with the image that I'm going to do this evening, which is the pigeons. So um, I've got it up here, which I think can you see it? Because I've got you cutting down the edge. Can you see the image? Yeah, we can okay. see most of it. Okay. All right. So I'm you're right. I did. I did send it around with the emails. Okay. The All right. So you don't need to see it necessarily. So I might cut some of it off, but really, I'm, I've got to try and forget what they are. So um, I'm just looking in terms of shapes and colours, and not being kind of brought into the fact I've got to do these perfect pigeons. I'm working on a canvas and it's a stretch canvas which has already been primed with a deep violet and white. It's not mine but I'm going to use it um, and it's obviously there was another painting underneath it so I've got a little bit of texture here so that might be quite nice just for when I lay a brush stroke it would just pick up a little bit of texture. 
So I might as well just dive in. So I'm just going to dampen my brush slightly. So I'm going to start off with this really large one. Um, so I've got some tissue. So another thing is I don't want a soaking wet brush. So because that will just wash away color pigment when I lay it on the canvas. So I'll just take all the excess water out of the bristles. So to start off with, I'm gonna start with a background. So I really just want a nice variety of greens um, in that background, just to get me started and kind of get my arm moving. So I'm gonna dip into my yellows. Don't know how I'm gonna do this. I'm all fingers and thumbs. So I'll try and show you as much as I can. So I've dipped into my yellow and I'm gonna go in with some green as well. So I've got a large canvas to cover. So I really wanna cover probably as much as I can at the early stages. So it's a bit too green at the moment, but I'm gonna lay it on anyway, cause I really just wanna get something down like that. So I'll maybe dip in a little bit of burnt sienna in there as well. So I don't wanna over blend it. So there's some really interesting kind of um, leaves in the background. So I might wanna just pick up that idea. One of the other things I've got to consider is I'm painting on purple, but I'm mixing on white. So I need to bear that in mind, obviously, however it looks on here, it's not gonna necessarily look on here. So I'm just gonna drag down probably a little bit more as well. So maybe just integrate it into the bottom. And this just connects everything at the start. So, just gonna lay something over here as well. A bit more yellow and a bit more coverage. Maybe a tiny bit of green again over here. So when it comes to things like leaves and trees that we've got in the background, I don't obviously, well, obviously I don't want to put in all the details I just want to suggest, as I mentioned earlier, about the patterns and the colors, because really it's about the pigeons and hopefully this will just complement them as I go along. So I'm, I've just picked up a little bit of burnt sienna with the green, so I've just darkened it slightly because it is slightly darker in this area. I've got to be careful when I'm stepping back. Just think, if you see the ceiling, that means I've just knocked you off. All right, so I just carry on working my way around. Okay. Yeah. Is it coking? You want me to? Oh, no, no, it should be okay. It's fine. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna, again, just drag this over here, around here, and more over here. So I just really want the, as much coverage as possible. And just gonna, Take that over there. So pigeons aren't really the most popular thing that people would go for. Um, but I thought that it's not really necessarily the animal. Most people go for the, say, the big glamorous thing, but it's really whatever you do, you've really got to find a way of making it exciting um, yourself. And hopefully 
it's a more interesting painting, which is why it's not going to look like the photo. It's really an interpretation of how, um, you know, how you can kind of depict a subject, which isn't probably the most popular. So where there's a little bit of the rattan fence in the background, I've just added a little bit more burnt sienna, just so it picks up on the orange a little bit more. So I'm looking to see what's in the environment and really utilising the colours that I can see there. Just to let you know, we'll stop about 25 past, 20 past or 25 past. Um, just for a little break. So, have you, sorry, a question for you? Yeah. Have you always painted this way? Okay, so there is a question. Have I always painted this way? Um, I think I've always, probably I started off with a large brush, which was, maybe about that size so it's a an inch um and the brushes tend to have got bigger but my partner hash he obviously you saw him last month was it i think he uses big brushes but i just decided to get bigger so and the good thing about it is you can create some really interesting marks so it's really just evolved and i don't see it even stopping here it's I'm constantly thinking about ways forward and and I'll tackle each subject maybe slightly different sometimes I'll draw them out first um, but this way is much more liberating and something that I definitely am exercising at the moment but we work me and my partner has we do work quite closely together so we do bounce ideas off and we're both into working quite expressively and really just trying to create a lot of coverage quite quickly. If you are working on a large size canvas, it's definitely going to be a lot quicker if you get a big brush and you just want to cover rather than use a small brush and then try and cover everything. This will come into play sort of later on. So it's constantly evolving. Even when I was at college, I was quite expressive, but I think we probably had a bit of a, an influence on each other, or he's had an influence on me. Okay, so these are the colours I've been mixing. So it's really just been a combination of some phthalo green, burnt sienna, and I've got a lemon yellow and a cadmium yellow that I've been mixing in here as well. And that's, as I'm picking up, the paint and I'm mixing it on here. I'm just creating different strengths and different variations of it just to give me an idea of the tones that are actually in the picture at the moment. So I like questions. I don't feel so lonely. It's very, very quiet. That's the only thing about the demos. In fact, I had a nightmare the other night about this this demo. I had I had a dream that, that I was late. <laughs> I was late and I didn't turn up. It was really traumatic. I was really upset because I was thinking Ken's gonna hate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a question. How do you choose what color to use as a background? Okay, so. The simple answer, I guess, is if you're doing a landscape, you don't necessarily want to do something that's green. So if it's a green landscape, you're doing something with a lot of blue sky in it, you don't necessarily want to use a blue background. So anything that's contrasting, so grey colours might be a lot more harmonious if you don't want anything too garish. Um, having something bright is nice because where it does pick up some of the texture on the canvas, um, it will just flicker through. So if I don't use any purple for the actual scene, 
it's just that little extra color which I kind of hadn't planned for but will hopefully ties it all together at the end. Does that make any sense? Hopefully. Yes. Good. Good. Right, so just continuing to, to cover. So you can see how nice and vibrant the yellow while it mixes with the green. And it's the same yellow that I'm mixing with the burnt sienna as well. So just slightly warmer on this side. Maybe have a little bit more burnt sienna in it. And I might just add a little bit over here as well. A bit more yellow. Because um, there is that lovely shot in the background. Colour. I can always go back to this later, but this is a really good way of getting yourself warmed up at the start. Got a follow up question. Yeah. So you are not looking for a specific reason for the colour, e.g., complementary colour, etc. So I'm not looking for the complementary colour. Well, I could do if I wanted to. The I'll nice thing. So uh, you're not uh, you are not looking for a specific reason for the colour, e.g., complementary colours. Um, Do you want to tell me the yeah, so uh, I think the question was the follow up question. Follow up question was um, would when I'm I choosing a specific color? When I'm choosing a specific color, would I go for a complementary color? So you are not looking for specific reason for the color, e.g., complementary color. No, <laughs> basically, I'm not. Um, sometimes I might. The nice thing about this is yellow is a complementary of purple, so hopefully that will pick up in the scene um, as I'm as I'm going on. So you, I could do that if I wanted to. Um, I haven't for this. Literally, whatever colours in the studio, whatever colour we end up having a lot of, um, we end up using it to paint the backgrounds of our of our canvases. But the general rule is if it's if it's something it would normally be something complementary um, unless I'm doing something a little bit more harmonious where I don't want to have anything bright coming through. Okay, so um, follow up to the follow up. Yeah. Um, no, I I always paint on a white background. I just wondered how you choose the colour of the board. Okay. Um, Okay, so the question was, I always use a white background. The reason why I don't like using a white background is because of what I what I said initially, is because some of the, as I'm laying brush strokes, you can see here, this one's quite weak. If it was a bright white canvas, then it would be bright white and it just would be really garish. It would look a little bit naked, if you like, but having a colour just creates a little bit of, well, a nice spontaneous kind of mark. Um, so I don't want bright white canvas coming through. I'll always put some kind of color, even if it's even if it's an off white or a kind of creamy color. I'd never have it just bright white, bright white canvas. Right. Okay. So I'm going to start introducing the pigeons. So I'm going to get a clean brush. So another decorator's brush, I think. Another question. Another question. Do you add anything to the paint? Okay, so the question was, do I add anything to the paint? No, I don't. I just have a slightly damp brush. And um, yeah, that's it. I try and use the paint as neat as possible. Um, it's the same when I was saying, when I mentioned that I use artist quality yellow, if I use too much water, that's just going to dilute the colour and really kill it. So even when I'm laying it on, I'm trying to do it in one hit, use as much paint as possible just so that it doesn't die off because that tends to happen with water based paints. Another question. Another question. As you, <laughs> as you use the same brush to dip into different colours, how do you stop the colours getting muddy? As I use the same, okay, so the question was, as I use the same brush to dip into different colours, different colours how do you stop the colours getting muddy? How do I stop the colours getting muddy? Um, I don't over mix. If I if I over mix the paint, so as you can see, I, I've used similar colours here, but I've just dominant every time I 
get a color out, I dominate it, but I don't over mix it because if I over mix it, it definitely will go muddy, which is why I don't know if you can see even the, some of the one strokes that I've made, you can still see other colors coming through that one brush stroke. That's because I haven't over mixed it. I'm literally trying to go from palette to canvas. If I, a lot of this is still wet, if I was to start mixing it now, that would definitely go muddy. So one stroke, leave it, move on. That's how to keep it fresh. And even down here where I've got, I've used, I've introduced burnt sienna, I've still tried to be one stroke, move on, add a little bit more green. So, you know, I've not got, some people might think that's muddy, but it's still relatively quite fresh. I think, well, from my from where I am, I'm just looking at lights and darks at the moment. Right, so let's get these pigeons in. So I've got some, um, I think I'm gonna start with a little bit of, okay, so that's probably a bit too strong. So I've got some deep violet, but I don't want that. So I'm gonna go with some blue first. Bit of blue, maybe a bit of green. So again, I'm painting on, I'm mixing on white. I don't want to over blend it too much. And I really need to just kind of lay it on and see what it looks like. So I might need to step back occasionally. All right, so I'm just going to lay a color there and there. And I'm just going to add a little bit of white to that and maybe put something here. So I almost wanna try and see these pigeons as one big shape. So I wanna probably just create some different variations of colors. Yeah, another question come in. Have you studied Constable's paintings? He always used a sort of pinky lilac for his underpainting for his landscapes. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't studied, um, uh, the question was about studying Constable's paintings. Um, I think it's lilac. You use a lot of lilac, yeah, what for a base colour? Yeah. Um, no, but that's, that's good to know. I'm obviously in good company. Right, so. In fact, I might even introduce a little bit of pink. So I just picked up a little bit of, I've got some processed magenta. So I might just, just to break up some of this, just add a few alternative tones. So really, I'm just trying to create some interesting marks. And the nice thing about wildlife as well is that they are kind of uh, connected. in the environment. All right, so again, just trying to work out. Okay, some of this is still wet, like I say, so it might pick up the color. But if I, again, if I don't over mix it, then it should be okay. So you introduce a little bit more, maybe magenta over here. So I don't really know if any of this is in the right place. I'm just hoping. So just by looking at the overall shapes and trying to forget that, they're, that I'm painting pigeons um, just takes the pressure off a little bit. Right. So I might not even get all of the pigeons in. I might end up just focusing on one or two, or not one or two, or maybe a few more than that. The canvas size I'm using as well is 24 by 30 inches. So it's quite large. So you can be quite expressive with the canvas this size. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kind of look at tones as well. So I do squint my eyes just to give me an idea of where I see the lights and the darks in the scene. 
once I might just need to step back slightly and I do try and hold off using white as long as possible as well only because that again a bit like water it just kills off color so just a few tails down there and around there so again also what i do is i tend to vary the pressure if i want a much more solid mark then i'll just apply a lot more pressure if i want it a little bit more gentle and then i'll just take the pressure off um, i don't know if you've noticed i kind of use the full breadth of the brush as well as the side or even the corner So I'm just going to pick up some green and I am going to use a little bit of white with this at the moment, maybe a bit of pink as well. Again, don't want to over, overdo it. So some interesting pigeons over here, kind of just having a little chat. And what I might want to do is maybe leave some of the colours that are in the background as well. And make them maybe part of the actual bird, if I can. So, so I'm kind of sight measuring where things are. Sorry, knocking you about. So just pick up a little bit more white, maybe a bit of purple. If when you do start introducing white and it starts going a little bit chalky, just reintroduce some colour again, because that's the only thing about white is it does kind of just kill things off a little bit. All right, so something around there. So I might start edging. Few of the pigeons here and there. And they're all having a good old chat, these pigeons, especially those ones at the end. They were at that Downing Street party, you see, and they had a great time picking up those crumbs in the garden. I'll just leave that over there. Let's maybe put a little head over here. And this again, this is all guesswork. And even if things are in the wrong place, it doesn't really matter too much. Hopefully the star will just create some movement and um, yeah, just gives it a bit more life. And so I'm really kind of reluctant to cover over. If I think I've created uh, if some of that colour can come through, then I'm going to try and keep it there. So I'm just going back in with a deep violet again. And I've got some light turquoise as well. So I might just introduce that. And so this is really kind of, this is definitely almost sculpting the the animals. Got a question for you. Yeah, questions come in. From where do you get the paint tray? Okay, so the palette that I'm using, which is a nibbles tray. I just get it from Amazon 
and it's like six, seven pounds. Um, if you if you want, I can email the link <laughs> to Ken and then he can pass it on to you all. All my students use it. In fact, they're the ones that introduced it to me in the first place. All my students find all the best tricks, tricks of the trade. Um, I think it's someone found one in a charity shop and I was like, that is brilliant. That, for the acrylic paints, it's just really good. So, um, so yes, yeah, I'll email you the link or email it to Ken. Okay, so really I need to start trying to make some sense of some of these things. So I might need to start putting in some lines just to give me an idea where I think things might be. So I've just picked up some pink, not sure I really want it, but I might just test it. Okay. And so I'm really using these ones here as a, as a gauge as to where things are. So I might, so I can still, this over here is still wet. So if I want to dip into it, I can. And the great thing about acrylics is you can paint over stuff. So even if you don't like it um, at any stage, you can just paint over it. What, is there a question? No, I'm still oh, sorry. Okay, so it's over there. And I think there's a head about here. And a body around here somewhere. Okay, so I might want to start lighting in some bits up. Okay, so he's got quite a light shoulder, so I might just introduce that right now. And I might, for the time being, I'm just going to leave that blank and just maybe put a bit of light there, there, and just drag a bit up here as well. Again, I'm going over some wet paint, so as long as I don't overdo it, um, it won't go muddy. So I probably want to come back to certain things a bit later. Okay, so let's move on. So let's just pick up some little bit of white and a bit of this light turquoise. And again, just trying to work things out by eye where things are. And this, that's a head. One of the things with birds. I always end up, even with most animals actually, first time I always tend to make the heads too big. And okay, so I'm just working out in relation to the next one. And again, just hope that things are relatively in the right place. And so I think there's a head in here. So I'm just going to indicate the top of that one's head. And move that over there. In fact, might even come over a bit more. So I just need to get an idea of where the body is. Down there. Up there. And this one over here, I'm just going to drag. So again, I'm trying to just vary the marks a little bit as well. So put his head over there. And maybe just add a little bit of green in there too. Right, there's a question following on from dipping colour in and brush being messy. Um, 
But don't the colors on your palette get really messy if you use one brush for several different colors? Okay, the question was, does my palette get really messy from when I'm picking up a few colors? Um, that would happen if I was to, it's the same as mixing on the, on the palette. If I was mixing like that, then it would definitely go muddy. Um, but because I'm literally just dipping, dipping, and not over blending, it's, it's still okay. I mean, there's some dark colors in some of the light colors, um, but not enough to make it go messy at the moment. And what I would do at the end of, of any painting is I might just skim off um, any of the corrupt, um, corrupted colors with a palette knife and then just top it up the colors again. But that would be at the end when I'm cleaning, not that I clean my palette that often, but that's what I would do. Thank you. Hope that answers your question. So yeah, it's literally, um, it's the same laying color on, don't over mix it, it won't go messy. Don't over blend, it won't go muddy. And don't over blend in your palette uh, of color either. Okay, fine, so thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so all looking very blue at the moment. So I have kind of put a few little guiding lines just to give me an idea. So I might even add a few more um, just to make a little bit more sense. So I put some lights in, so maybe I'll put some darks in. So I've got some uh, deep violet and I'll put a little bit of green in there. Maybe a bit of burnt sienna, it might be a bit too dark, but we'll see, we'll just go with it. And so these, this time like this, we, you hold your breath, because you think, oh, go. Okay, so. I think this is where this one's chest is. So I will make it a bit darker. And again, what I'm trying to do is maybe um, utilize some of the stuff that's going on underneath. I may well decide later on to cover it, but at this early stage, I want to see maybe how much I might be able to get away with. So, Let's just move this one out. And, and again, the other thing is I'm looking at the bottom of them. So I'm using all of those ideas as a way of kind of measuring. It's just a little bit more of an original idea. You don't get something that's overly predictable if you just kind of maybe do something a little bit slightly off. Um, what I mean is even if you're doing a, the natural tendency would be for me to have started this end probably, um, but I'm starting with the ones that side, or I might start, rather than start with the head, I might start from the tail so that way I'm getting something which is a little bit more different. I'm not trying to think literally about heads and, you know, eyes and things like that. I'm, again, just trying to focus on just the shapes and the colours, the marks that they've got. Okay, so where was I? Around here somewhere. So again, the leg's in the wrong place. I'll just move it around. And while you've got a lot of marks in, you can probably get away with a bit more as well. Just go put that in. So. so that one's heads over there somewhere. And Okay, so I'm just going to pick up, picked up some of the turquoise and cerulean blue that I've got on my brush here. And 
again I'm just trying to think what I can save that I've already put in the only thing is it's just trying to make it look make it make sense that's the, the hardest bit so sometimes sacrifices have to be made for it looking interesting Right, so I just move along um, something there. And I'm just going back into some deep violet and just coming along here with this pigeon. Keep an eye on the time as well. So a bit of burnt sienna on there as well. And So some of this might be in the wrong place, but we can use the background to carve it out as well. So what I might do is just maybe drag out something if I don't like it. And maybe drag down. So I'm just dragging some of these colours into this bottom bit as well. Just so it's not too contained in those areas. And just kind of just introducing it elsewhere. Okay, so I'm going to just add a little bit of white to this colour here. And go back over here just to lighten that up. Again, I'm going to leave that a little bit just to see if I can save it. And just move along, just lighten up. A little bit of this one. And back into some cerulean blue, maybe a bit green. Okay. The white. I think that is where the head is. It's a little beak in there. It's kind of all hunched up a bit. So I'm just going to drag a little bit of that there, a little bit of that over there. And it's going to lighten up his back a bit. And we're going to add the nice shot of pink in here so I'm going to just add that as well over here it's probably a bit too light too soon but you can do something quite drastic if you want to I can tone it down as well and Okay, so let's go over here to this one. So just trying to bring this bird out a bit. All right, okay, so another few minutes, another couple of minutes, and we'll have a little break. And in fact, I think I might just get rid of that. And then I can just lighten that as well. Okay. 
down over here. We just need to solidify those shapes a little bit more. Sorry if I keep knocking, keep knocking this with my shoulder. And his leg might come over there somewhere. So again, just lightening up some bits. And these tails down here. See some of that underneath I actually really like, so again, I'm going to see if I can keep it there. And again, just follow on over here. And right, okay, so what I can do, if, if, you think that some things need to be chiseled in a little bit, then I'll just use the I'll just use the background to do it. So I'll get another brush. Another, this is a one inch. So I'll just go back in with some of the colours I used earlier, a bit of green, a bit of yellow, and I can just chisel into the shape and hopefully it will make a little bit more sense. And so that will just help just bring them out a little bit more. And I can use some of the background. Well, I hope you can see them start to emerge. I might just introduce a little bit of that as well. Okay. Just a little bit more green around here. I think this one here is quite important. And so it's quite wet around there, so I'm reluctant. This is where it will go muddy, so I should really probably just move on. And so just bring out these shapes a little bit more so. 
again, you probably see that I'm working on the entire thing rather than just trying to work on one little bit at a time. That way it just keeps it kind of in keeping with everything else, hopefully. Just gonna put a little mark there and just gonna just indicate a couple of little things. And there. So hopefully, slowly but surely, they start to appear. Okay, I've unmuted myself. All right, so second half, I need to really start making a little bit more sense of these pigeons. They are still quite wet at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce something of that um, railing that they're actually standing on. But it's not a very interesting thing in itself. So I've got to think, be creative and think, okay, well, railings aren't exciting, but maybe the, the colours would be exciting. I'm not going to change it too much. I just want it slightly, um, maybe that kind of colour is quite nice. So I'm going to go back in where, with the green. So I've just, again, damped my brush. So bit more yellow, so I'm just going to go over here. A bit more yellow with some burnt sienna. Just so it's slightly warmer. And I'm going to just drag some of this in certain places. So maybe a bit more burnt sienna, just to warm it up a little bit more. And let's move along. A bit more burnt sienna, I think. And I'm just gonna drag it over there. And a bit light, lighter over there. And just gonna change the direction of it a little bit. So it's kind of slightly abstract as well. And just gonna take that over here too. So warm it up a little bit more with some more burnt sienna. And that yellow. I just don't want it the same one flat color. So just continue with that. <clears throat> and I'll just introduce some over here as well. And I'll just take some up. And maybe have, like, you could really alter, maybe do something, have an edge here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> or just the occasional little edge. But I don't want to make it too obvious. So really, it's, you're just experimenting and seeing how you can interpret something which really isn't that interesting. Because I could have a little bit more warmth I think down here and it just creates a little bit more coverage with the canvas as well. There's a question. Okay there's a question. And a comment. Um, love this. Do you often use palette Um I don't I don't normally so <clears throat> someone said do I often use palette knives? No. <coughs> um, I've never used palette knives. Um, the only thing about palette knife is if I was to lay some colour on it, it would probably just act more like a trowel, so it would be quite flat, I would have thought. Um, but the way that I'm kind of dipping in colour, I'm kind of getting a variation. So I don't think I would get the variation of the colour and the marks if I was to use a palette knife. Um, but what is maybe something you could do is maybe combine the two so you could have um, lots of maybe expressive and multiple kind of colors on your brush 
um, kind of marks, but then maybe use a palette knife to maybe do a few other things. Like maybe the edge of a palette knife might be quite nice to give you some interesting um, line work. Hope that was useful. Okay. So I might just put a little bit of that up here as well. A bit more yellow. Too much more green. See, I think I'm kind of working around it just to give some of these areas a chance to dry. I mean, the one thing about, I mean, I've done this picture once before for a demonstration, and each time it's different because I'm not really focusing, I've got to do it exactly the same way every time because. Because I'm working probably um, quite expressively, I'm picking up, I'm not measuring the amounts of, of paint that's on my brush. You know, there's a lot of spontane spontaneous things happening. And then I'm just trying to make sense of it um, as I go along. So this is really uh, kind of just an idea of, of the approach that I tend to, to take with my paintings, but it definitely, you know, I do consider a lot and I do take time away or step back and think about, okay, what do I want to say? What can I say? What should I just get rid of? What do I sacrifice? So I'm thinking a lot about um, what's happening. And I do normally take a bit longer to finish a painting, but hopefully, okay. So Hash is just out of the chat room for a few minutes, uh, 20 minutes or so. So if you do want to ask a question, you could probably just unmute yourself and do it that way. Okay, so where am I? So I've just got a colour on my brush. So I'm just going to apply it in certain areas just to create some kind of edge and maybe lighten up. Some of these birds. It's always difficult knowing what to kind of get rid of and what to keep. Okay. So I've just got a little bit of yellow. I think this was actually in there and because I've got some yellow on it now and I've just put some white in it. So that's why I've got that colour. And obviously not obviously, but if I use it in one place and I probably want to introduce it in maybe a couple of other places as well. And so I think I'm going to leave that bit there and Okay, so I think this one comes out a little bit more. So, so I'm just going to go into maybe some of these, this colour, still slightly wet, um, but it's just slightly darker. So I think this one actually comes out a little bit more. So I'm just going to bring them out a bit more. Go back in with some blue. Marie? Yep. Could you paint this way in oils? Because I paint with oils and I'd love to do a painting like that. Um, I think that it's funny because I was thinking about it recently and I was thinking about maybe doing the, the thing about oils is that the colour are much more. Um, Oh, what's the thicker word? they're thicker and they're they, not so pliable they hold their color really well as well they're much more richer i think yeah hmm. um, whereas sometimes with acrylics there's a bit of a color shift so i was even thinking about it the only thing is because i'm working quite quickly i don't really want there's a lot of wet paint even with acrylics at the moment if i started you know what i was saying earlier about if it's too wet and I start blending it. Yeah, yeah. The thing about oils, oils just blend. You just, 
because when I have used them in the past, I've got so frustrated because they just haven't dried quick enough. Whereas yeah, some, of yeah. these, some of these marks, I want them to be hard marks or hard edges. Mm. Whereas mm. oils will just blend and give you the nice. That's the thing that people love about oils is the nice soft blends that they get. Yeah, yeah. But with yeah. acrylics, um, acrylics don't work great. That's why people that use oils they don't like acrylics because they don't blend, <laughs> they blend as nicely because they love that feathering, you know, that nice soft edge. That you yeah, get. yeah. So unless you're willing to sacrifice that or be very, very disciplined about put a thick layer of oil on and don't play with it and then just move on to next. I would do that. Yeah, I'm going to have to learn to do that. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's just a case of just being sort of disciplined, I suppose. Mm. Did you think about the colours you were going to use before you started that painting? And um, they've kind of changed a little bit. I've tried to keep it simple <laughs> um, because when you're doing something that's already quite complicated, I would say. I must admit, when I saw what you were going to do, I thought, how on earth are you going to do the pigeons? Yeah. <laughs> but you've, you've, you've cracked it. Fantastic. Well, well, anyway, I'll mute myself it. now. <laughs> oh, it's quite nice. There's people there. Um, but yeah, well, it's just a rough cut, really, is probably something that I would, again, just justifying it, spend a bit more time on. But the thing is about painting like this as well, it's actually fun. Um, you really feel like you can get into it. So I'm just using that head's in the wrong place. I'm just going over it. See, this is the thing, if this was oils, it would be really frustrating and probably very wet constantly. Right, so I'm just gonna... So I'm just hoping really things are kind of in the right place. So I need to lighten up. I think this one's bottom bit over here. So that was in the wrong place, I think. And so I'm going to go in with some dark. You really also got to be quite brave um, when painting like this because you're not necessarily going to be producing a pretty picture um so you've got to think that you're not trying to please anybody <laughs> because sometimes that's what stops us being a little bit more daring and just trying to you know you want to step outside your comfort zone occasionally and you know things can go I say go wrong, but it's just totally different. And you just learn a bit more. So just drag that up a bit. And I think that's bringing that head back in where it was before. That's the thing sometimes when you look at the photo too much, you really want to just try. The longer you look at the photo, you end up just getting really sucked into it and you end up losing um, things that you started with that you actually really liked. I know I do sometimes. What I want to do, I can find the brushes, I want to maybe bring this one's bottom up a little bit more. So I'm going to go back in with some of the green and just do a little bit of negative um, painting bit in there and a little bit there. So that's quite bright, but I can always tone it down, like I say. And And sometimes when you correct things too too much, um, 
you can't you do sacrifice something that might be a little bit more interesting that's why sometimes I have to really discipline myself and say I can only spend a certain amount of time on it and because otherwise if I spend too long on it it just completely changes the entire painting changes and so the main thing is as long as it looks relatively like the thing that you're trying to paint hopefully that's enough And you really want to enjoy it as well. Enjoy the process. Just I need to start lightening up these pigeons again. So not that one. I get a clean brush. Treat myself to a clean brush. So again, a lot of this is still quite wet, so I can dip into it, pick up some of that. So this is. Bristles are damp on this brush, so I can maybe just start applying. So a little bit of white and a little bit of lemon yellow in there as well. Um, I think there is a bit of a issue, but let's keep going. So when I've done pigeons in the past, I've, I used to, a few years ago, did quite a few pigeons, but they were much more angular. Um, but then it, it just depends on my approach. Like today, I thought, I'll just dive in, just show you an alternative way rather than just draw them all out, um, but actually use the shape as a whole um, to connect the, the animals together. A little bit more white now, and maybe a bit of blue. I'm just going to reintroduce a little bit of that. I think you've got a little foot over here somewhere and top of that tail. Again, every turn I'm, I am trying to save some of what's already in there where I can. And I'm just going to have to so some of that color I actually quite like, so I'm just going to see what I can get away with, basically. <laughs> I suppose that's all it is, really, just seeing what you can get away with. So add a little bit more white in there and just where I can see it slightly lighter down there. Okay. So I'm kind of using the brush to follow, my eyes following that and my brush. So I think the head probably was in the right place the first time. So I'll just put it back in and this might mean that the other one might be have to move. Again, when it comes to things like beaks, you don't want to overdo them, although it looks a bit like a turkey at the moment. 
but again you don't with acrylics if you make a mistake it's probably if you can't take it off straight away then I would leave it let it dry and then come back to it later and just paint over it that's the best way to deal with it so just lighten up So just add a little bit of green in there. And back in the white. And then go back in with the blue. Otherwise, I'm going to end up looking like the background. Have you ever painted elephants? Um, I have attempted it a few times. Mm. <laughs> I've attempted it a few times and I think elephants are really hard, um, especially because I know that I've got to do something really interesting with them mm. and it's really hard. So they are my kind of, they're on my list of things to do. Again, I've attempted them a few times and I've not been happy because I'm not satisfied just doing it the way that it is in the photo. I've got to yeah. um, do something creative with it. <clears throat> um, and that's the thing about wildlife. It's been done to absolute death. So anything you can do just to change it slightly or make yourself stand out um, if you're you know, part of anything. Yeah. Uh, wildlife kind of organizations on that's a great way of looking at it actually yeah that's why for me personally it's far better for me to probably do things that really maybe upset the apple cart a little bit it's not what people expect um i mean there's so many really good super realistic um wildlife painters but i just think well i can't tell the difference between any of them really mm, mm. and I've seen it you know technically really really good and um, but I'd personally where where I'm coming from I'd rather see something which really surprises me and I think oh, I haven't seen that before that's a really interesting way of approach and it might give me a, sort of ideas about you know about I can see the pigeons now it's fantastic are they starting to come through yeah especially that one the third, fourth one along. One, two, three, which one? That one? No, that the other way. One, two, three, four, that one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, maybe we should just focus on one. Well, they all are, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. I think that number four is the hardest one to paint. I've messed with its head about five times. Oh, well, well, you my, do this mine, well. all look oh. like, mine all look like budgery gars, not pigeons, <laughs> but that will do. <laughs> no one else will know. <laughs> That's the thing. No one's really, apart from you lot, no one really knows. Mm. You know, if I if I was to do this painting and you hadn't seen the photo, you wouldn't, you'd just think, oh, it's an expressive, <clears throat> it's an expressive something. Yes. <laughs> Some sort of bird, you might think. Yeah, mine yeah. are. And they look like they're on a twig rather than, uh, I don't know. But yeah. they're very different than anything I've done before. I really enjoyed it. Thank oh, you. Well, that's good. Well, that's the thing. Even if you don't like it or you don't do anything with it, um, the actual process itself is really exciting. Yeah, it is. Really and, fun. And really, yeah, really fun, really liberating. And the great thing is, um, me and Hash, we probably, we really promote mark making. Um, and we run workshops where we promote mark making. So a lot of our students, they come to us because they like the expressive nature of, of what we do. Mm. Um, but the great thing about it is that everyone is completely different. Um, everyone's marks are really unique to them. So even if you're using similar brushes, um, your marks are good. You know, if we're all doing the same picture, mm. they'd all be completely different. Whereas if we were to all do something super realistic, we'd all look pretty much the same. Whereas this kind of way of working, um, everyone, every single one of you, however many of you there are, would all be completely different. It's lovely. It would just showcase your unique marks um, within your work. All right, so where was I? Okay, so we're going Number four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's which way I'm going. 
All right, so I did want to put some maybe some a few little dark marks in. There's a question. Oh, there's a question. Oh, Hash is back. So, <coughs> um, whoopee, Hash is back. Could you paint with this style but with smaller brushes, i.e., to produce a smaller picture? Question mark. Uh, yeah, you could. I think really it's about it's just it's what I said about the mark making. You're just creating marks. Um, so however you want to do it, whether it's a big brush, small brush, um, you can still do that. I think what's really fun is using a big brush on a small canvas because you get it done so quick. So that's, I mean, that's all a really good challenge as well. Just set yourself some little exercises about, you know, just ways of loosening up. If you wanted to loosen up what that is. This one. Just going to put a few little marks over here. So again, when I don't want to be too fiddly either, um, we just got to be careful not to be too fiddly. So these ones, it's just trying to get their stances. That's probably quite tricky. Um, so this over here. I'm glad you had a go though. And um, mm -hmm. that's really good. I'm just gonna, what I probably should have done is maybe put a darker color above his head. So if I'll go back to maybe, I'm not sure I'll just stick with that brush, I think. So I'll go back in with some green and just a slightly darker green. So it's gone a little bit, see that's gone muddy, I don't like that. So I'm just going to drag up a couple of marks here and there. And if I've got it there, then I probably should just and then put it maybe over here as well. And so I'm just trying to use that background. So that's a little bit muddy, but it just creates a little bit of depth. That's what these layering bits are. So if it was just one flat color, it would just, it would just be flat, just very uninteresting. So you're just trying to make something um, so, so yeah, so if you wanted to set yourself any kind of little exercises, just find something really dull, even a really bad photo, and just see what you can do with it. Um, someone's asked a question, but I think you've, you've answered it. Okay. So we see? Yeah, there's a question. Now that the background is dry, would you consider working into it to make it darker, to make the, the birds stand out more? Yes. Oh, good. You're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I would. I should probably do. It's always, it's, it is definitely gauging. So this is the point where I think, well, okay, I need to stand back and I probably need to look away and then come back to it and think, okay, what do I need to do um, to get them to stand up? But more do I go darker? Do I go lighter? Let's put in some dark just because we can. So let's dip back in with some maybe burnt sienna and phthalo green. Might put a bit more burnt sienna in there. And okay, so again, I'm testing it out on here really. So let's just see what happens. Good. So there is kind of in that background, it does kind of link up a little bit. So there are some dark bits. And then if I want to, I could then go back in with some light as well. So I might just make that a bit more solid. So 
So the other thing you could do is if you found it all too busy, you could calm things down um, by just maybe making, um, could have some areas a little bit flatter if you wanted to. How do you know when to stop? Mm, that's the hardest part. <laughs> that's why taking a break is good because you can come back to it with hopefully fresh eyes. Um, I know with demos, the time to stop is when the time's up. Um, but I think that's the hardest part. I think if you set, and I've been doing this recently, if you set yourself a time, you have to stop. And I find that really hard because I'll set my, top, my stopwatch on my phone and I'll say, right, well, half an hour on this. And then you do half an hour, I'll take a photo of it and then I can't help myself. I want to do more on it. So I do more on it. And then I've overworked it. But the good thing about having the photo is that you realize actually in 30 minutes, you probably had everything in and it looks so much fresher. Whereas the longer you spend on it, the more you tend to just keep putting things in, putting things in. And what happens is you're killing off color. Um, and you just, yeah, it's just overworking it. So that is the hardest. The hardest um, thing is knowing when to stop. Okay, so I really want to maybe just bring these out a little bit more. So, okay, so this one, so again, now I'm, I'm doing more. So I've got to a stage that I actually personally quite like. Um, and, you know, I, I could just think, okay, am I making the right moves? This is the hard thing. Am I making the right decisions or am I making the wrong decisions? Sometimes other people can can see better than I can um but but you just have to go with it you have to go with your your gut I suppose and then just learn from it if it didn't work just take note and just try not do it again okay so I just want to maybe they got these lovely kind of turquoisey bits in their head turquoisey pinky bits So a bit more white, which you can't really see too much. And so so maybe here and there I might want to indicate a few little kind of marks just to suggest um markings without overdoing it. And again, I mean if I if I just fill some of this in, I might regret it. So I'm I'm being a little bit I'm trying to be brave and just go with some of the stuff I've already got and see what I can do with it. Probably doing it for a demo probably isn't the best time to maybe try that out, but I think it's far better sometimes for you to, to see something that's, you know, or someone do something that's just a little bit different to, everyone knows it, draw something out and color it in. Everybody knows that, but I think it's a lot more interesting just to see um, a different process, if you like. I probably, I mean, I really enjoy the process and it's probably my favorite bit. It doesn't always work, but, um, but hopefully you can, when it does, it's really rewarding. And my remit is I can't do that super realistic stuff anyway, because it's just been done too much. So I've got to focus on doing something that probably isn't easy for people to do. And this isn't easy. Um, it's fun, don't get me wrong, but um, there are decisions that are tricky make right, so I'm gonna put that brush down another little tip sometimes is when you're when you're using like the colors you might want to have one brush for your light colors if you're working at speed and then another brush for your dark colors um, so for my dark colors I've been using a deep violet a phthalo green and burnt sienna I find that burnt sienna mixes a really nice dark with those colors. 
So rather than go for a black or, or a gray, um, I'll always find an interesting dark to put in my dark areas. So, but, and it won't be just one flat color either. So there'll be kind of a variation of these cool, cool shades that are there. Right, so that's down a sec. So in this, so around here, I could maybe, again, try and use the background to, there's a lot of kind of pushing and pulling um, kind of going on. So again, let's try and maybe use some of the background to, maybe, Make a bit of sense. And I think I'll put some feet in. I'm sure some of you will be really excited about that. It's like eyes. People love with wildlife, people love it when you get into the eyes. We are excited about the feet. <laughs> they get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's never as, it doesn't deliver as exciting as you get. Right, so I'll just use a little bit of um, process magenta and a bit of deep violet, but I'll put some burnt sienna in there as well. So I probably want to maybe indicate the darker bits first. So again, you don't want to kind of overplay it, just block it in. And there's kind of a foot over there somewhere. And so I'm going to put the darker shades in first. Um, and, you know, not be too careful about it either. So whatever the marks are, however the small the area, you want to kind of keep it in keeping. If I tense up too much, um, then it's really going to show. Don't get me wrong, I do get tense sometimes. It's normally when you over, when you spend too long on something. And I can't really see the other, the other feet. So I'll just add a little bit of white to that. And maybe, okay, so. It's probably a bit too much. What I don't really want is you to kind of your eye to be too drawn into it. So just need to soften it a little bit. Maybe make it a bit more orangey. Okay, we do. Right. And again, just a little flick here and there. Maybe a bit more red or uh, not red. Process magenta. Yeah, it's funny, people always get excited about things like this. And it's probably the least exciting, or well, it's probably more disappointing. <laughs> right, so there's a little bit there, and I'll just highlight. So I put in I put in a little dark first, and then I just kind of skimmed it rather than going straight away with the light. Just kind of skim it. It's probably really vibrant, but then I guess if you're doing a vibrant painting, you can make it as vibrant as you want. It looks vibrant in the flesh. I think the colour of the screen might have knocked it back a little bit. Right, so I'll put that down because it's pretty bright and probably need to do something around there. So a bit of pink. I'm going to go back in with some pink and white, but I'm just going to mix it on here. Sorry, if I, my shoulder keeps knocking this thing, the stand that you're all on. Right, so I'm just almost over exaggerating the colour because it's not standing out that much. And I might just put that to find those feet are a bit bright. But again, I don't want to probably mess about a bit too much. That's the thing, when you start introducing completely different colours, you 
the tendency is I want to introduce it somewhere else just to make sense. Um, so just because otherwise new colours that are introduced, all of a sudden the viewer's eye will just kind of directly go there. So as I mentioned earlier, acrylics sometimes they do, um, once they've dried, they kind of do die off a little bit, um, especially with the student quality um, paints. There's a bit of a colour shift. So it's, it's good to gauge at the... Once it's dried, do I need to go lighter? And um, what can I do to really maybe punch it forward a bit more? So I might just, um, rather than go too light too early, I'll just kind of save it. So just giving them a bit of a shape in his shoulders. And... Uh, comments. Yeah. I'm learning so much listening to you talk through your thoughts and ideas as you paint. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, someone just said that they were enjoying listening to me. But I don't often get that sort of comment. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope it's useful. Um, definitely getting something which isn't necessarily um over say over planned i've got an idea um but i'm really just trying to be a little bit brave i guess in the the approach and not just be too safe i think is probably the appropriate term and I am trying to also utilize everything that's that I've already started with without getting rid of everything um, too quickly. Even if you know you you don't kind of paint this way, or I hope that you kind of take something from it, um, something useful. In that case, I, I do want to maybe lighten his head. So again, just trying to utilize um, all angles of the brush as well. I'm really conscious that I don't want to be too lazy with um, certain things. That includes just using one flat color. You know, I've got to kind of maybe create some sparkles of other colors just to add that bit of interest and so that when the viewer looks at your work, they're kind of hopefully um, stimulated by the, the color or the marks. Um, and, and I think it just kind of indicates a bit of emotion as well, but hopefully um, people can get. Okay, right, so court past. So we've got a few more minutes, not too long. So really it's just a case of just trying to, I think I've done this, take that bit to go higher again. <laughs> I can paint over it at another stage. The general comment, uh, there's so much movement, I can almost hear the birds. Oh, it's funny. I did this at a demo for another art club and um, yeah, I think because of the colours, it, it definitely had a tropical kind of feel to it. Again, one of the other things I probably should mention is that um, I do a lot of wildlife painting um, and I do wherever, actually, I always use my own photos, it's not wherever possible, I'm always using my own photos. So these pigeons um, were taken in Richmond Park in London and you know you just kind of you want to use your own photo you don't just want to lift off of the internet someone else's and again they're not the most popular thing to paint but hopefully you can you know whatever you paint you can make it interesting or exciting 
I think it's really about just showing people there's other ways of doing things, not just one way. Oops, didn't want to do that. Just going to go around a couple of colours. This one's got neglected, this one over here. Um, okay, I'm mixing. I'm mixing in my colours now, and not colours are going muddy. So if it does go muddy, you just need to pick up more paint and just dominate what's on the brush. Naughty girl. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be able to put a frame around it for us? Um, I I can't. I don't have any frame. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. What I could do is photograph it and then put a pretend frame in it. What and send it to Ken? Yeah. You mean? Yeah. Although, um, actually, the when I photograph it, I'll, it'll probably have a natural. Um, yeah. Frame to it anyway. Oh, don't worry then. Let's see. But I mean, it's not, it's not going to be completely finished anyway, I don't think, well, it definitely won't be. Um, it definitely takes me a bit longer. Could you send it then to Ken and then he'll send it to us when you've finished it? Is that what you mean? Uh, I, I doubt if I will finish this. Um, what at all? Yeah. Probably. Oh, okay. Yeah, with demos, I don't tend to finish. Oh, okay. Um, if I if I do um, continue a bit, but because I'm working quite fast, um, yeah. I'll probably end up, if I went back to it, I'll probably completely change it. Um, yeah, yeah. But I but I'll see. If I do, then I will send it to you. Um, but hopefully you'll well, you'll have the video. Of saying. course, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> So I'm just applying a little bit more paint. That's one of the things I always say to my students as well. Probably one of the most common things I tell people, just use more paint, makes all the difference. Just do a little bit. So you can see this one's definitely not been worked on as much. But, but it doesn't matter. I think sometimes you want to have maybe just one that you can, like one focal, one for the focal point. But it's what you're going to get in a couple of hours. Or less. A comment. Yeah, there's a comment. We, we like a photo because we share it on social media. More promotion for you too. Oh no. Okay. Well, maybe I should finish it then. <laughs> You'll definitely get a photo. And um, yeah, maybe I can doctor it. Make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make it I think it's great as it is. <laughs> oh, very kind. Okay, I think I'm going to stop very soon because I don't think we're really going to change that much. No. Like you say, you can overwork it, can't you? Yeah, and I'm already picking up other colours that, mm. that's changing it. So just gonna video. See, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm gonna end up blending in the background. I'll do one more little thing and that will be in the ground, I think. So not the ground. Um running that space as well. I'll just go back to the big brush and put some white in. So it's going like that. And I'm just going to see if it could well, it'll go pear shaped, but maybe it kind of needs a little bit of lighting, lightening up in some 
areas and just break it up. Don't be too. Um, That's lovely. Careful. <clears throat> So I'm just kind of dotting this about um, just to kind of do something with that, just to break up things a little bit. And I think there's something over here, some of the bits. So where some of it, it might be slightly confused, that might be where I, I, I kind of concentrate some of my efforts. Um, but then some confusion is quite good because you don't want to bring out everything. Um, and just put a little bit more yellow in there. Burnt sienna. And maybe a, maybe a bit of deep violet as well. And I'm just kind of testing it. I'm just taking risks here. I just think it just needs something, a few extra bits here and there. So you have to be careful with the, the bright because um, it will just draw you in. I could just knock it back a touch. So again, for something which is very boring, like graylings, um, hopefully you can make something a bit more interesting of it. Okay, I think I'll leave it there um, because I don't think I'm going to make anything, do anything more too drastic to it. Hmm? Oh, so you can unmute yourselves. I'll leave it there and I'll, I might do a little bit more on it and I'll send you the photo, yeah, but I'll certainly, I'll certainly send you the video as well. Well, thank you, Marie, for a fascinating, inspiring evening. It's been great fun. Fantastic.